Hey guys, Books Nelson here, back with another video, and today we're going to be responding to Lily Murray. I hope I'm saying her name right. To her comments about the My Team community and the Kobe controversy, uh, because she is a former Next Maker, so far as I understand, she put out a big post about Next Maker feedback that made a lot of waves in the Twitter section of the community, and uh, I think she's. Drake's goddaughter, uh, according to Twitter, if my information on that's incorrect, let me know. And according to her uh, profile, she's a former D1 athlete, which gives her, um, is, has given her access to 2K. So she's speaking from an informed place. But just because you're speaking from an informed place in one area doesn't mean you're correct. And we're going to unpack all of this. And before we get into the content, I just want to emphasize, even though I'm going to disagree with some of the things that she says, this is not a roast. This is not me coming at her. This is all because my whole thing with this channel is to elevate the conversation, elevate the level of knowledge that the community has so that the community can be equipped to ask for what they truly want and that 2K can be equipped to respond in the way that they feel good about, that they know, okay, we can meet our bottom lines and make a good video game. That's the goal, right? I want 2K to make their money, and I want you guys to have a great game that you don't mind spending money on because it makes you happier. That's what we want. But we can't have that if the conversation is in a bad place. And in 2K historically, for many reasons, the conversation has been in a bad place. All right, let's get right into the content. So I'm starting here from her intro. I'm skipping the, the so I'm going to skip around in the video a little bit, but it's not to go over like, you know, take her out of context, but there are some things that are just not necessary to respond to. So in the beginning, she's just thanking her followers because she just got monetized. Congratulations to her. And now she's going to get into it. But right here at the end of the intro, she does say something very important. And then she, and to outline, she goes in to talk about the Kobe controversy. We're going to skip most of that because she's just summing it up. Everybody watching this video, you're already aware of it. If you're not aware of it, I highly suggest you watch DBG's video, which will be in the description below, or my video, which will also be in the description below. Both more informed summaries about what's going on. But let's pick it up. I couldn't do this without you. So today I want to talk about a topic that you guys brought to my attention that you guys specifically asked me to talk about. And that... Okay, so two things. One, she is sped up because I want to get through this video at some point under, you know, a reasonable amount of time. But also, people asked her to talk about this. So she's not coming into the My Team community, you know, trying to lord over people and say, you know, this is what you do and blah, blah, blah. You know, she's she was asked about this and she's doing the best that she can. However, even though I think her intentions are in the right place, and I don't think she's 100% wrong about everything she says, that context is important. That is the recent controversy over my team. As you have probably familiarized yourself with this channel, I usually have a slightly different take than majority of other people when it comes to any of the topics that we talk about, let alone topics considering NBA 2K. I was not actually planning on talking about it just because I personally do not play my team. I do not have. Okay, so two things. Number one, she talks about the way her opinions are different from the majority. This is the problem when you're coming into a community you're not familiar with, because you don't really know what the majority opinion is. And we'll talk about this in detail later on, but I'm bringing this up, again, not to roast her, but if a prominent person, former next maker in the community, who's looked at as logical and having perspective and having been there, speaks about the my, my team community's opinions in a certain way, we have to course correct that. Right. And we have to say, no, that's not what we think. That's not how we feel. And even though I myself am a smaller content creator, my general perspective has been mostly echoed by the larger content creators, the DBGs, the Thai Debos and so on and so forth. I have my own background experience of playing that side of the game and knowing everything that's going on. But I know enough people and I play MA2K enough to have a general sense of what is going on. And I also feel like I have a really honest and objective take on what happened the other day when it comes to my team. Now, my team has been under scrutiny all year. Like, you could go back to before the game even came out, and there was a lot of things going on. The community was very unhappy. A lot to do with the player market and the way cards are being sold and bought on the game, how much the game costs, that side of the game, actually, and all of those things. Okay, so we're going to skip forward here, right? So this is where she goes into the summary. You can watch her video, also link in the description. And, um, you know, if you want to see the whole thing 
in case you feel like she might be misrepresented or you're not getting the whole picture, but we're not going to go through her summary of the issue we're all aware of. And that they would have to change it. Now, from 2K's perspective, they did not, and I would venture to guess were not able to, speak too much on why the reward was changed. Rightfully so. I need to make this a point, a statement in this video. Rightfully so, everyone was pissed off. <laughs> So I'm going to pause right here. So one part I skipped over just a little bit right before she said that. She says um, it was April 30th or May 1st that they said this. And I just want to pinpoint when they did talk about this. It was at the end of the workday at the deadline of the card coming out. Right. So they posted it. The person who's hired to post that posted that and then grabbed their belongings and went home. Right. Uh, and when they posted it, they didn't post it on Twitter. It wasn't a public statement. It was in a discord that you have to get access to. So effectively private was, is it exclusively private as in, you know, a DM? No, but it was gate kept from the rest of the community. You cannot just go onto the internet and go to that post. Someone from the discord has to take that post to a public forum like Twitter. So effectively, 2K never told the community what happened. You know, 2K told a small, very small section of their community what happened. And that's important to highlight. Nothing I'm saying in this video is telling you that you do not have a right to be pissed off about not getting the reward that you were promised since the beginning of the year, since before the game came out. However, I want us to take a deep breath and understand that this does not feel weird to you. Okay, so here we have two appeals to emotion, right? One is you have a right to be angry, and one is doesn't this feel weird? And while, you know, we're all human, right? If you're a part of the My Team community, you have many reasons to be upset. But the reason I talk about this is because, so now she's responding to the emotion of the community, which is anger, without responding to the data. And one thing about the data is, this collector reward wasn't for the greater community. This corrector reward was for an extreme minority of the community. That was the collectors. Most people aren't going for Kobe, right? That's a very small part of the community. And that's an important thing to understand because when the greater community is upset about what's happening to a very small part of the community, it's not usually about that one thing. Do you genuinely think they wanted to do that? Like, sit, sit with me here. Do you genuinely think a company on purpose promised a reward they knew they couldn't give you and then pulled it out from under you a day before a month ended that you were supposed to get it and thought this would go well? Like, that's the part for me that I feel like a lot of us need to be a little bit smarter about when it comes to discourse around things that happen on games like NBA 2K. Okay. Now, again, she's not a part of the community. Virtually everyone that I've seen speak about it there have only been two main theories, and guys, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Theory one is that something happened that didn't allow them to put it out. And most people at least acknowledge that as a possibility. So this person who doesn't think it could possibly have been something behind the scenes that went wrong, I can tell you that that's not, real, that's not a majority of the community just because not only did I say that, and very, very few people doubted that something could have happened but dbg said it dbg is a much larger content creator people weren't coming at dbg like impossible there's no way something went wrong behind the scenes it was more about how they handled it rather than you know something having to do with legal issues or, or, or licensing issues could have gone wrong we were all aware of that i spelled it out in many ways in, in my video so we we understand that right but we're going to go to her next point here, just establishing that as a community, I believe the My Team community is fully aware that something could have happened and likely happened that made them not able to put the reward out. The other competing theory is that they pulled Kobe out of the reward so that they could put him in packs to be determined. Uh, I'm still, I would say I'm on board with that as a possibility, but... I'm I, I'm pretty certain, not certain, I have pretty good reason to believe that something happened, right? Just by all of the scuttlebutt that's coming out. That having been said, if Kobe is put in packs, 
later in the year, we have a problem. But let's let Lily continue. Games like any game, right? 2K is not the only game that has issues. But it seems like 2K is one of the games that has the most issues consistently and says nothing about why it's really going on. And they've just built a reputation for not being as transparent as I feel and others feel that they should be and need to be because they would avoid a lot of crisis as well uh, if they were more transparent about certain things. Like, for example, the terms of service. Now, when it comes to my video I've already done on the new TOS, if you guys want to see that, go ahead and look at that, look at that video. Okay, so... She kind of veers off in a direction, and this isn't something I've seen brought up by the majority of the community. I've seen a few whispers here and there. Oh, they did the terms of service so that they could take Kobe away. That's a pretty fringe idea because most people, again, understand that the terms of service is a global thing. This, this is about the terms of service is about gaming and the microtransactions overall in gaming and rights. It's not about this one basketball game. Uh, I would be surprised if the terms of service didn't have as much to do with uh, precedent and GTA as it had to do with NBA 2K. So we're going to skip over the entire terms of service stuff because I don't think the my team community is concerned about that as it relates to the Kobe issue. But the main thing that she hammers home is, you know, the terms of service is consistent with gaming and, you know, it's not the reason and all this other stuff. I don't I think. I don't think that's a real argument or a real discussion. So we'll, we'll keep it moving from there. More. Now, when it comes to this collector level reward, I, I can look at the situation, understand exactly why everyone's pissed, understand exactly why people are calling for action, all of these things. I have to add that there is a part of it in which 2K certainly could have handled better, right? And it is a fact that when they replaced the reward, they replaced it with 200 overall cards of your choice. But it was brought to my attention that the best 100 overall card on the game, which is, again, I guess, you know, I don't know that personally, but that's what I've been told, that the best 100 overall that is available on the game was not included in the selection of 100 overall cards. Probably not the best way to handle that situation. Probably should have put that card in the selection. That part I can agree with people is that when it came to the fix, it could have been handled better. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's discuss this. I think the one thing that the entire community agreed on, I, I have not seen one disagreement on this, was it's not the fix. It's the fact that they waited until 5.30, literally end of the workday to to do this that's the problem right and the the 100 overalls replacing kobe see this is when you, you you say i can understand i can look at the situation and understand but see with all due respect you don't understand because and we'll get to this point later it wasn't just the 100 it wasn't just the kobe being removed that got people upset the other main factor is that they obliterated the player market making the rush to get Kobe literally infinitely more expensive. And when we say infinitely more expensive, meaning if someone actually wanted to get every card in the game, there's no physical way to do that. There's no amount of money that anyone can spend to guarantee that they get that stuff. We're not going to revisit Troy Dan spending over $10,000 and getting one 100 overall for that entire time. I would look at the fact that when Troy Dan did his recent video, I think he spent two or three grand, um, he only got half of the dark matters to get the collector reward. And on top of that, and this is something she wouldn't know about the game mode, there have been many, many less cards released because we haven't gotten the content that added the bloat, right? We didn't get the spotlights and the bracket but in the march madness stuff and, and all of that stuff we didn't we didn't we stopped getting amethyst cards and ruby cards you know seasons ago we've only gotten pink diamonds and above all season six cards plus unattainable dark matters and invisible 100 overalls which directly affects the collector level so you think you understand why the community is upset but you actually don't have the details on the information and these these details are extremely important and actually understanding what's going on before you can comment on it accurately. 100% agree. They could have gave you more than that, right? 100% agree. But when it comes to whether or not 2K intentionally scammed its consumers, I can't jump on that bandwagon. I just simply cannot. Like, I can't sit here logically and think that that is what happened. Okay. So, and this is what we covered in my video. 2K 
absolutely intentionally scammed the viewers, not by removing Kobe, but the things that made the road to Kobe more difficult were intentional. In fact, let's go to the original sin. Pack odds. Pack odds are horrible in this game. Literally terrible. Like the ability, and if you look at the value of the cards versus how much you have to do to get those cards. It is based on the sheerest of luck. And the odds aren't, oh, well, if you spend 100 bucks, you'll get everything. If you spend 200, 300, 1,000, 2,000, 10,000, you'll get everything. We don't know what the number is that you have to spend to get every card. And we also don't know what the percentage is when they say negative 2%. That is an actual scam, right? So... Yes, no, they scammed the collectors because they, it's the Charlie Brown. They pulled up the football and the collectors, the collectors all kicked invisible air and fell on their backs. That was a scam. They said in the beginning of the year, you're going to have a player market. Most of the cards were going to be available. And then, uh oh, SpaghettiO, we're 7% in the hole. So screw you guys. No more player cards for you, no more player market. Now you have to gamble for unknown percentage pack odds in order to get this thing. So that is the setup. That scam is the setup. That was a scam. That is a scam. In fact, that is a far worse scam than the collector reward that was removed for legal issues. Even if it wasn't removed for legal issues, even if it was like, oh, well, we can make more money with Kobe and Pack, so we're going to change it out and give them 100 overalls. And they, somebody was like, yeah, that's a good idea. They were just wrong about that. That's a scam, and it's a bad scam. But it's nowhere near the bad scam of saying you're going to have a player market and then deleting the player market mid-year in exchange for a gambling simulator. That is the very definition of a scam. They showed you one thing, sleight of hand, and then did another. And this is absolutely within 2K's control. They absolutely did not have to do that. Right. So we're going to keep it moving. So it only strikes me as the most obvious consideration and the most obvious to what probably happened was that it was a licensing issue. And that unfortunately in 2K trying to handle the situation in the best way that they possibly could have, which is what I would think is what happened, is that they advocated to keep the reward all the way until April 29th, April 30th. That is what happened. The game tried to keep the reward. That's why it took them so long to say anything, right? They tried their best. They looked through every avenue to try to keep this reward in the game because they knew how bad it would look if they changed it. And you could argue that if they knew that there was a problem coming up, let's say, let's say it was the beginning of April, maybe it was in February, wherever you want to say when they figured out that this reward could potentially be a problem and that whoever they licensed this likeness from for this reward would change their mind. Okay. So I think what she's saying here is likely, right? That they, they ran into a wrinkle in some negotiations, there was some, some some change, and they were trying to work it out. I think that's highly possible. This is a thing that happens all the time, right? And sometimes these things do get solved in the 11th hour. In fact, uh, when rich people negotiate, sometimes they are very late to come to the table. I highlighted that in my video. I said, even if Vanessa Bryant showed up in Novato, California, and, and, you know, April 30th and said, oh, by the way, uh, no, we're not doing this. That still doesn't excuse all of the stuff leading up to it. And if you were in those struggles to see, here's the problem. <laughs> I had a, I had a, me and my brother was uh, talking about going to the store once. And I said, uh, well, you can, you can go to the store and I'll, I'll handle stuff here. He said, wouldn't that be convenient? You son of a bitch. And we both laughed. That's what happened with 2K. Oh yeah, we're in negotiations, but we just won't say anything about it until you guys spend all of your money trying to get this thing. Wouldn't that be convenient? See, and that's like if, if you owe somebody a bunch of money, right? And you say, okay, I don't have the money when I said I'd give it to you, but I'll give it to you on this day. And you're just like, oh, and they say, okay, well, can you give me what you have now? And you go, oh, I'm waiting until I have all of it. Oh, isn't that convenient for you? No, you, if you're doing your best, as she said earlier in this segment, to rectify the situation, then you do everything you can leading up to the issue, right? But we're going to keep it moving. Because again, they changed their mind. No one's dropping a product, a billion dollar product and not getting confirmation on a license 
but things can change. Something can happen, right? So that's what I'm assuming is happening. I think that's the most objective way to look at the situation that happened. Um, but again, it's up for you guys. You guys let me know in the comments what you think, right? Okay. I do think that that is a plausible theory. I do not think that's the most objective way to look at it. And I'll give you guys a competing theory to explain why. Let's say March 15th, negotiations completely break down, right? And they know no Kobe reward. And they're like, okay, what are we going to do to replace it? And they say, okay, I know what we'll do. We'll give them two 100 overalls. That should make it better. And somebody in the room goes, that will make it better. But A, we need to actually put those 100 overalls in the market because we can't put out the 100 overall that is currently out once the reward becomes available because that one's in the market, right? So we can't have that ruin that, that pack drop. They go, ah, good point. Okay, we'll wait until those cards are out and we'll just do it at the end. And somebody else says, oh, that's a good idea because this is Kobe. And if we're going to sprinkle the ashes of Kobe all over our bank accounts, then it's going to be, you know, a horror show anyway. So since we're going to catch massive backlash, we might as well get as much as we can out of it in order, you know, you know, when leading up to that moment, we're going to get our butts kicked anyway by the community. Right. So here's what we do. There's no way to solve this. They're going to be super duper angry. We'll give them the best that we can, which is 200 overalls. That's the best our imaginations can come up with to fix the collector reward situation one and a half months out in our fiction, fictional date of March 15th, when negotiations fully broke down. Does that sound also plausible to you guys? Does that sound something like a corporation would do? I'm not saying that's what happened, but objectively speaking, that's a theory that I think works just as well as, oh, they found out April 30th at 529. And unfortunately, the day came, nothing was fixed, and they could not do anything else. I'm not saying anyone does not have the right to be upset. I 100%, 100% understand grinding all year and finding out on the last day that something was possible, that it would no longer be possible, and it was something that you were looking forward to and that you were grinding for. 100% valid reason to be upset. Not grinding for, spending for. Spending and grinding, by the way, because you also need to get a healthy amount of those free cards, right? So you have to do this. You have to spend time and money. And that's worth noting because while 2K can't really affect the time factor because there are no money spent people, there are grinders who need good content, so that has to be worthy for them to do, they do control the money factor and the pack odds. So... You know, they, they control the upset barometer to some degree by gatekeeping these cards behind, again, infinite amount of money and unknown percentage numbers, which could literally be 0.0000001% could actually be the odds of pulling 100 overall. And it also could be the odds of some of the dark matters, right? They could, because we don't know what the odds are in terms of the dark matters being equal chance and that sort of thing, because there's no duplication protection in, in, you know, to, in my team, that's something they could put in the game. They could put duplication protection. They could put exchanges in there. So that if you pull five dark matters, you can exchange for a dark matter option pack, right? How do you get five dark matters by spending a bunch of money? So when we talk about them doing their, but I just came up with that just now. So when we talk about them doing the best that they can, I think that is a ridiculous idea because as I've always said, 2K is extremely, they, they're filled with extremely intelligent people. What they do is for a reason. They're not right about everything. Part of being rich and intelligent and good at what you do is also being arrogant which I think 2K is. It's also being narcissistic and selfish when you get to the upper end of shareholders and those kind of guys who are starting to look at numbers and bottom lines and stuff like that. They care less and less and less about some 15-year-old you know, with his parents' credit card as they go up the chain, right? I'm not saying that necessarily happens, but it does happen, and it happens in frequency. So the idea that they actually tried their best to resolve this situation, I see no grounds for that part of her theory. I do not think they tried their best. I think they tried their best to maximize the value of Kobe Bryant's name, but I don't think they tried their best to make their disappointed collectors happy. No, 
I think they tried their best to extract as many resources as they could from their collectors. And my evidence of that is the mission accomplished banner that I'm sure is hanging from their offices after looking at what they made after they made these decisions to extract resources from their community. But who you should be upset at and why? I don't agree with the majority of what I've seen people say, and that's just where I'm going to leave it. Like I said, I can't logically sit here and think that that was on purpose. I can't logically sit here and think that that's the reason they dropped the TOS. Um, again, all the games, a lot of people get on these apps and advocate to play instead of 2K, have the same TOS. So you, I'm going to say the words. I'm going to let her talk about the TOS here just so you guys can see why I skipped the other section. But nobody in the My Team community is talking about leave 2k and play fortnite and fortnite has the same tos that's not what the my team community cares about the my team community cares about being able to build their team you look stupid like you look stupid because all these other games have the exact same tos and you're claiming that you're not gonna play 2k over the tos that the other game actually dropped earlier now i understand a lot of people backing off from 2k because it was just a really bad look if you look up straw man argument in the dictionary i think that that is it um and in particular, like, again, if you're on the internet, you can find someone somewhere saying something. But if you're in the My Team community, I don't think you've come across this uh, Fortnite TOS thing nearly as much as talking about the player market and auction house and player availability and gambling and, and everything else. Um, a lot of people putting themselves in their audiences first because that's what you have to do. 2K didn't do it on purpose, but unfortunately, it happened, right? Unfortunately, it is a horrible look. And unfortunately, it is another example of the problem i've been talking about which is that 2k needs to fix its user experience and this only further doubles down on that point that yes something happened but your fix could have made the user experience better in that situation that situation not even being a thing speaks to user experience us enjoying the game so much that one reward being taken out of it doesn't hurt us speaks to user experience i'm gonna counter this point because i think the two things that make this situation unique from other games is number one, 2K has a uniquely low opinion of their community and exercises this by their uniquely low treatment of their community because it's not an exaggeration to say that 2K only speaks to their community when they're marketing or when they're covering their butts. They don't speak to you guys otherwise as a, as a larger company. Individual developers might give you the time of day, which is why, for the most part, I throw a little shield on the devs. It's not because I'm friends with the devs. It's because I genuinely think, like, I'm not friends with Mike Wang. I've met Mike Wang. I don't, I don't know him, right? Um, but I genuinely think Mike Wang's trying to make a good game, and I genuinely think Mike Wang wants people to enjoy 2K when they buy it. I do not think that everyone in the upper offices feel that, feels that way, and I don't think that that's what they're thinking about when they're communicating with the community. So we have this undercurrent of, of just disdain. You know, we talked about the lizard people before. They're back. They're back. We're talking about the lizard people now. You know, they don't care if you live or die, you know, like these people in the upper range. And I, I'm not exaggerating. I honestly think they don't care. Like, I don't think they care if you sell your house to buy my team cards. As long as they as long as they hit their bottom line. And again, what's the evidence for this? That's that's such an egregious that's such an excessive claim, right? Oh, they don't care if you lose your house. Well, is there anything they do to at all limit how much money they can get? Or do they maximize the amount of dopamine they try to give you in the game? All right? Gameplay experience. Uh were, were resources quite obviously diverted away from playing the game, from the features in the game mode that actually are new and what other live services do, which is like, here's a new thing you're doing this month. What are the events in my team, right? Did you guys get events? No, you had your live service team diverted away to something else while you, maybe next year, maybe the mobile app, I don't know, I'm not there. But by the lack of content, we can look at the evidence, right? We can look at what was done and say, well, listen, your intent, and she talks a lot about intent, right? But at the end of the day, if you have all of the best feelings about not paying your landlord, at the end of the month, he's going to go, where's my rent? What are you going to do to get my rent, right? 2K does not feel this obligation to its player base, right? They don't feel obligated to deliver anything to you. 
They only want to extract your resources. They're not trying to improve the gameplay experience in my team. I'm speaking my team specifically. My team is about extracting resources from you. It's not about making a quality game mode. I would I would bet all of my guitars, and I have like seven guitars, and I love them all. I would bet all of my guitars that if I took all of the my team developers and said, hey guys, can you come up with the most awesome my team mode possible? I bet you anything that it would look so different from a feature standpoint that than what we have now. And what does that show? They're not trying to do their best. Now, realistically, even if they wanted to do those things, there's only so much time in the development cycle. There's only so much talent to go around, right? They're, they have to fix the game, right? They still have to do a lot of other things. And they have to get ready to work on the game next year because it's a yearly game. So their ideal version can't exist. But what would exist is their ideal version filtered down through the realities of making a yearly game. Is that what we have? No. No, we have literally nothing until these recent playoff spotlights, which are just random games. It's not even like there's any there there. It's just, okay, here's some random games with some random stuff, and, and here's more cards, right? But it's not like a real video game mode. The mode came out early in the year and hasn't changed since then, and it's supposed to be live service. It's supposed to give you a reason to spend your money not getting a thousand people to bandwagon on the fact that 2k scammed all of its <laughs> consumers speaks to user experience more than anything else so this video is not me getting on here and saying that we shouldn't be mad and that you should just take things to the face no this is me saying that this is a perfect example of what i mean by we would have such a better experience such a better time if everything else on the game was fine okay so i i talk to you guys about this all the time i think rec as a game mode well you know not just rec but my career theater all of that stuff I think that's a far superior game mode. The game plays better because there's less AIs and AIs, obviously they're bots, so they bring problems. Anytime you have bots, you're gonna bring problems, right? Especially in a game that goes back and forth like 2K. Um, but also the features. The theater rotates events every year. Why doesn't that happen in Triple Threat? Why isn't there a section of Triple Threat where it's like, okay, this is the theme this month or week or, or season. There's no seasonal themes, right? So. The user, but, but at the same time, even though the user experience is better over there, that's not the problem. I said there were two things in the My Team community that are an issue. One is a global 2K problem. 2K doesn't talk to their community unless they're marketing or apologizing. Two, and their apologies aren't genuine, don't last long, and they happen in private discords. And two, um, the My Team community is extracting your resources. They're taking so much from you. So I don't care how good the game mode was, I think the player market lie that happened, you know, going back on their word with the player market and the availability of the cards and several other things in the My Team game mode that they literally lied on. Everybody has the receipts. You can go watch DVG's video if you're confused on that, right? That, it wouldn't matter how good the game mode was if you're like, okay, the game mode's good. Now I'm charging you infinite money to enjoy it. Right. Like that would I think actually that would almost make it worse in a way, because imagine if the spotlights were up and you had to get a full team of, you know, Bulls players and you really wanted to do that with the Michael Jordan card and you have no way to get them. I think you'd be even more upset now than you would be when there's nothing to do in the game mode where you're upset on general principle. <laughs> You know what I mean? So I don't think it's about the user experience. I think it's about the lack of respect for the community and the fact that 2K is gouging the my team community, for lack of a better term. They're just gouging you guys, you know, and or trying to, right? Would the user experience be nice if it was better? Absolutely. I argue for more game modes all the time uh, and more things to make the game better all the time with the communication help yeah well that would help with the lack of respect right if you don't talk to me then how can i imagine that you respect me if you won't even talk to me but you saw a community and you saw consumers for an entire game cycle complain about their user experience and then one thing happens that blows everything out the water because that user experience has been built up and built up and built up and it's not something we haven't seen happen in another game okay so i disagree with her point here because even though the Kobe thing blew up. I think that blew up more because of the name Kobe Bryant. Anything that happens with Kobe Bryant is going to make news, right? So if I go to Forbes 
and I say Kobe, uh, 2K screwed up something with Kobe, they're going to turn around in their chairs. If I go to Forbes and I say 2K destroyed the player market, they're going to keep doing whatever it was they were doing, right? So in, the, in, in this word, we come back to the point of if you're not in this community, some, you know what I mean? It's hard to have an educated opinion without knowing what's really going on. This community has been absolutely on fire since the All-Star break. Since they did this with the All-Star cards, the community has been on fire. And my entire apology tour, tour, tour theory was based off of, I can't imagine they're going to go too long like this because this is so demoralizing to the community. And apparently, they don't care about how demoralizing it is because they've let the My Team community just burn to the ground all this time, which is what it has done. Do some people enjoy the game despite all of this? Yes, but it gets harder and harder every single week when there's nothing to do and the cards have drained you of all of your resources and everything's harder to get and the cards are the only content in the game until the recent playoff stuff. Fortnite abandons things that they said they were going to drop all the time because of licensing issues. They took out that whole, the whole music thing that was happening from the Fortnite Festival thing that they dropped. They took that out, patched it, how do you put it back in it? There's a whole quest that you have to do that you cannot finish because it's no longer in the game. But guess what? No one cares because the user experience is enough. The other things they drop in the game is enough. The other rewards is enough. Now, I do agree with this one overall point. I don't think this necessarily has to do with specifically Kobe. So I disagree on that point. But I do think 2K would be able to screw something up as far as live service goes and go, oh, we really wanted this for you guys, but you know, it just didn't happen. Everything didn't come together. It's live service. We didn't have the time or something broke, so we couldn't do it that way. Whatever it may be, I think they would have the room to do that if the content was better and they had better communication. Yes, in, in a fantasy world, that is true. But in the real world, destroying the player market and moving to the all gambling model for the upper tier cards and really more of the cards in the collection, right? Because usually we get what, five or six pink diamonds and six dark matters plus the 100 overall. So there are seven cards we can't get and five or six cards we have access to, right? So, you know, you know, having that model, I don't think there's any amount of communication that would make that okay. That was a predatory move and the community is going to be rightfully unhappy with this new way of doing things. They pull the Darth Vader, the, the, the Darth Vader. I just, I'll change the terms of the deal. And that's what we don't have. That's what this game is failing to do for us, failing to do for the consumers, failing to do for the creators, is that the user experience is not enough. So when things go wrong, it only heightens the fact that the user experience is not enough. That's all I want to say in this video. It doubles down on things I've said on multiple videos on this all right, and after that, she just re reiterates her points in the outro. You guys can check her video out, video out if you want to see that. But yeah, this this whole 2K did a oopsie, and it would have been okay if they were just nicer to us. I don't think that's what's happening here. Um, that's again going back to the Star Wars example. If you guys are familiar, it doesn't matter how nice Darth Vader would have said to Lando Calrissian. No, I'm changing the terms. Once you change the terms, you're the a-hole, right? Like, that's it at the end of the day. You're the a-hole. You can change the terms and be like, oh, yeah. That's like, you know, people be like, oh, yeah, sign a contract. Well, you're going to be here long term. And then two months later, they they lay you off. And it's like, oh, yeah, here's a watch. It's like, dude, I don't care about the watch, man. I don't care about the watch. I don't care about the going away party. I got to find a job now, right? It's the same thing. It's like, no, no, no. You're charging me infinite money to enjoy the mode to build my team. It's called my team, and now it is your team. And the only way for it to be my team is for me to spend infinite amount of money to get the cards that I want, which aren't necessarily always the best cards in the game because you guys intentionally make sure that this mode is not competitive. We'll talk about that in another video, right? So her premise, I generally disagree with, even though I think she came to it in good faith. I think she came to it with the logic you know, based on the information that she had, but ultimately, I think it's incorrect, and ultimately, I think as a my team community, we just need to state that no, that's not accurate. What's really going on is allow us to have the cards in a reasonable way, please. Right? We understand we spend money and time on the mode if you want to get everything. 
but give us features, allow us to have the cards and return it to being my team as opposed to your team or my casino. That's our problem. Not 2K made a oopsie with the Kobe and we're just really upset about it because we don't like 100 overalls. That's not what's going on here. And, uh, you know, I appreciate her taking the time to respond to the request to talk about this. And I actually am glad that we get to discuss this so that we can, as we say on this channel, elevate the conversation and be very, very clear about exactly what we're unhappy about and the practices that we disagree with in the My Team community. All right, y'all, back to long form for this one. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. Uh, last I checked, we were 50 subs away from our monetization. So I would definitely appreciate that because once this channel is something that's actually giving resources instead of just taking resources, I will able to put even more into it. But until then, I appreciate all of the support you've given me so far. Can't thank you enough. Absolutely love engaging with the community and having this conversation so far. I'm going to keep it moving no matter how bad 2K treats us. <laughs> all right. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.